Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you all how I'm going to go about making a leather binder cover. It's going to be completely removable. You can take it, it's going to be sized to fit a two inch binder, but I'll show you how to make your own modifications to size it to whatever you're going to be using. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I guess the first step actually is going to be, this is the artwork that I worked out with the client. Um, they seem to like it pretty well, but I made it to an eight and a half by 11, not to the size of the actual cover of our binder. So the first thing that we're going to do is resize our artwork or the actual cover, and then I'll meet y'all right back here for us to get started. Okay, so here you can see, this is the artwork we had originally done for the client. Um, and while the height is kind of accurate, like I think that's pretty close, um, the width is off significantly by like two, almost two and a half inches. Um, so I am going to try to come in and resize this and kind of recenter everything else back up. So, I think what I'm going to do is, hmm, let me see if I can't cut this out, because I'd like to not have to redraw it, like that'd be super cool. <laughs> so let me see if I can't just cut out the edges to see how it actually sits without the paper in the way. And this is just regular, like, a uh, scrapbook paper. I really enjoy using its Strathmore Sketch. It's got a fine tooth surface, but, um, it's 50 pound paper in 11 by, uh, 14. Um, I really like this as an all-purpose. It's a little, a good bit more durable. Ooh, that noise, though. Than, um, just regular old copier paper. But it's still thin enough to easily trace through for whenever I have to redo designs. Um, set that aside. Okay. Now, on this binder, we're going to have, I mean, this is all going to be tooled, and I'm going to have an, a laced edging all the way around it. Um, so I think sitting like this will work out pretty well. Now also, I think if I cut it off at the halfway point, like I could just add in another knot on either side. Okay, so here we are with our newly designed cover. I actually cut out the, the piece from the other page um, I just extended and added in an additional knot on each side, um, and I think that'll work out pretty well. So what I'm going to do now is roll out this piece of, oh, this is maybe five ounce leather. And I'm using a much thicker leather because I'm going to be doing a lot of tooling and I want to be able to get a really nice depth going. So, and I'm just using one of my old music binders, um, so, uh, it's like ancient, but, um, I'm just going to take this and kind of line it up as best I can. Sorry, I don't mean to be getting my head in the way of the camera. And I'm actually going to come through and just mark with a pencil. Um, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a um, seam allowance. So I'm doing a mark and then I'm moving up by like half an inch. Oh, let's give it just a, yeah, just half an inch should be. I don't want it to be too tight though, so I'm going to come up just a little bit more still. And now I'm going to do the top edge. And then same way, I'm going to come out almost by an inch. 
for the sides. Um, just because I really don't want, whenever I close it, this expansion here on the corners, I don't want that getting complicated. Okay, so that should be all that we need this binder for, for now. Um, I am going to cut this out using a box knife. Just a nice sharp blade. Staying on the line as best I can. And if I'm going to mess up and slide off of it, I want to slide off this way. So I can always trim in more, but it's really hard to fix having slid the knife into the main part, like the main expanse of the project, if that makes sense. Okay. Bring this in just a bit. that nice and done on both sides Oops. see how I messed up though thank goodness it happened on that side <laughs> okay so now I'm going across the top Please pardon me while I block. And I want to stay on my cutting mat as much as possible. And there we are. Okay. So this is our outside. piece for our leather. I'm actually going to set that off to the side while I roll this up. I'm going to worry about cutting the other pieces later. I'm going to flip it over. Make sure I have enough room. And it looks like it should hold up pretty well, adding that extra little bit. Because, I mean, an extra little bit of space. This is a thick enough leather that um, we should not have to worry about it being, like, extra weird and floppy. If I were making this out of fabric or a much thinner leather, I'd be a lot more worried about it. But I'm just not that worried. So I'm going to take this and case it, which means I'm going to fill up my kitchen sink with water. Um, just straight, clear water, no additives. Um, and I am going to submerge this and bubbles will start to rise out of it and it's going to make this almost hissing noise as the air escapes it. And, uh, and I'm going to hold it under until the bubbles stop and then I'm going to pull it out and let it drip dry um, until it starts to return back to its normal color. So I'm going to go do, go do that and then I'll meet y'all right back here. So here we have our leather pulled out of the water and I'm actually just going to use a piece of freezer paper with the waxy side down because that repels the moisture from the leather but will still let us get a nice um, transfer going on and I would like to position this equidistant from the corners or from the edges of the leather rather there we go that's looking pretty good and now I could actually use a spot of tape if I can find my tape. Did I put it away? I did. I'm trying to be better about being organized, but I keep losing everything. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a little piece of tape to hold everything kind of where I want it to stay. I think just one at the top and one at the bottom will do us just fine. Um, and now we can actually go through either with a ballpoint stylus, 
but I actually lose track of where I'm at way too much with a ballpoint stylus. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through with a ballpoint pen. And I'm just going to start tracing uh, kind of heavily. I don't want to punch through the paper, but I want to make sure that it's getting a very nice transfer through to the bottom side. See how that kind of looks? I mean, you might not be able to see it. It's quite faint, but it's there, I promise. But this helps me to keep track of where I've drawn. And I'm going to go over it. Normally I do it with a blue pen first. And then uh, next time I use this piece of paper, I'd use a black pen or a red pen. You know, so you can get like three uses out of it pretty easily before you start to lose track of um, what lines you've already done. And I'm just coming through, tracing around. And I'm going to keep doing this until I've drawn the complete design, both the border and the center, and then I'll meet y'all right back here. So I have finished tracing all of this and now the moment of truth we're going to peel it back and you can kind of see it is very very faint but all those lines honestly I should have let it dry a little bit more before attacking it with um, all the paper <laughs> just to see you know how it comes out just because the detailing on the scorpion you kind of really have to catch it from like a side angle um let's see if I can't get some lines cut in here go ahead and start doing some of the uh, cutting so now I mean you'll want to be able to see what you're doing. This seems to be a good cutting consistency. Nice and damp, not too soggy wet though. Let me see if I can't zoom in a bit more for you. So here you can kind of see, you can see the lines a little better. And I'm just going to kind of come around. And while I have my hand kind of in this motion, I'm going to go ahead and repeat all those little lines, you know, that kind of coming in that one direction. Just let that habitual muscle memory take effect. Making sure that these lines line up with these lines. I don't want it, you know, this line to end there and this one to start, you know, right here. You know, it's, you want them to stay nice and um, in line with each other. Going ahead and getting those cut. See like how that one, I want it to line up a little better with the work that I had already done. There we go. And so now I'm going to keep doing this. Also feel free to rotate your leather to however is going to best um, suit. Don't feel like you have to keep it just straight up and down the whole time. Turn it, twist it, do it a bunch of different ways. Um, so I'm going to keep cutting until I have this whole pattern cut out. Um, and then I'll meet y'all right back here.
Hey everybody, so I haven't finished all the tooling yet. I'm going to design, this came out a good bit wider than I thought it would, so I'm going to design something um, and work with the client to see how she likes it. But I have all the other tooling done. Woohoo! And I've decided to bring out the details on the scorpion in the name since it's quite petite and I don't want it to be muddy. I'm actually going to be burning these guys in, which I think will be super cool. Um, but I'm going to start going around and doing the beveling first and foremost. And so I want to show you guys how I do that. I just, I lost my little squirt bottle. Um, so, crap, I don't know what I did with that. So I'm just going to take some drinking water and be ultra fancy and just go like this like boop and just smear it around in my hand so you could use a sponge you could use whatever um and you can really see the difference between maybe you can see it the difference between freshly cased and the stuff that's kind of fading back to its original color so i have to figure out what i did with that squirt bottle so now i'm going to bring the camera down and around so that hopefully y'all can see what it is that I'm doing. And I'm just using a beveling tool. This one's textured. Um, you can also use some that are smooth, but I really like the way that this kind of grabs uh, the stain whenever I go over it. <clears throat> and I'm just going to line up with the edge of where we've cut. This is going to become complicated because this little camera arm gets in the way of where my hammer goes. So let me see if I can't um, figure out a better camera angle for you guys. Okay, so I don't know, I mean you can't see as well, but I'm just gonna hammer it. And I'm just letting it walk the, uh, the beveler right along the edge and so now you can really see the darkness that it brings to right there <laughs> and this is a larger piece but I'm gonna be shifting it around and everything because I really like to come in at an optimal angle to be able to do the beveling the way that I want And it just comes around like that. So let's see if I can't get you guys a better angle. And so I'm actually going to come around to the inside right here like this. So you can see, I mean in real time here. Oh, sorry, <laughs> hit the camera or the tripod arm. Oops, sorry. But yeah, so that's just me walking it along. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, see if I can't. Sorry. Give myself a little bit more room for the hammer to move. And so, kind of repeating the same strokes, that's something that's really nice about Celtic Knotwork, is it's, it's nothing if not repetitive. So, I can go through and do this inside curve on each of these knots. And it just, it really does save just a little bit of time, but those seconds add up, especially when you're working on a huge project. You know, shaved seconds become minutes become, you know, sometimes you can shave 20 to 30 minutes off of a project just by not turning it all the time. Okay, so I'm getting that textured and then I'm actually going to rotate it <clears throat> and now we'll be able to come through right here just line that up and come around like this 
and I'm going ahead and doing a very firm bevel. Oops, didn't mean to hit the tripod. And then just as I place each one, I'm just trying to get a nice smooth foot. Because, I mean, there's a little bit of mistakes and stuff going on here, but you can always come through and kind of clean it up as best you can. Okay, and now I'll be using, it's a texture tool that looks like I lost it. Where'd you go? Here it is. I'm going to be using this texture tool. And hopefully if I remember to, there'll be links to all the tools and materials used here down in the video description below. But I'm going to take this and set it in at a slight angle, just like that, and go like, see how it textures? And I don't know if the client wants the entire background filled in, if they want just a little bit of the background filled in, just however they decide, but I'm gonna start with it like this, that way it'll do a gradient in because um we're doing a really beautiful purple stain on this and um i really think the stain will show off the grain of the leather and so but that's why i really like working with my clients you know step by step in the process um that way every step of the way they can be like mm, you know can we try it a different way <laughs> so but i'm going to go through and do the beveling on all of the knot work and then I'm going to go in and do this backgrounding and I think I'm also going to fill in the background in between these little pieces and then I'm going to be doing a wing divided border and it's going to be backgrounded in along here too so I think that'll look super cool so um yeah uh, I'm gonna do that and then get with the client and work with them to see what they want and then I'll meet y'all right back here probably tomorrow morning well I mean for y'all it'll be like seconds but for me hopefully I'll have slept <laughs> okay so I've gotten most of the tooling done and I discussed it with the client and I think I'm actually going to be burning this section in as opposed to tooling it because I don't want to risk it getting um, muddy so what I have here is a walnut hollow um, brand wood burning tool um and it has replaceable tips now this is very hot like actually i am a dork and i burnt the crap out of my elbow on it because i forgot i had heated my uh iron up um <clears throat> but the way that we're going to come in here is i'm actually just going to touch it to the leather and keep in mind this is going to smell like burning flesh because it is you know leather so it may not smell great, but it's going to look pretty darn cool. And you can see how quickly that has the effect um, of burning the design into the leather. And I want a nice clean edge. So I'm coming around our cut lines first and burning in. And just kind of keeping that going. Oh yeah, that smell though. <laughs> Don't hesitate to rotate and turn your leather to give yourself the best angle. I really like to be able to see and control where my um, my burns are going. And there's never any sense in getting sloppy, so don't uh, don't rush yourself. But yeah, this is just how I go through, and I'm actually going to burn 
this whole design in. And it does kind of serve the effect of um, imprinting itself a little bit into the leather. Not quite as much as tooling would, but there's still, there's a texture difference there. And so I'm actually just going to go through and continue burning the rest of this Celtic Scorpion as well as the calligraphy name. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get done with that and then I'll meet y'all right back here. So I'm coming through, the client absolutely loves this part, which I'm glad because Randy and I like it as well. But I was talking to her and um, I'm going to fill in kind of these areas with um, this background texture and then just do a light border here on the inside and around the uh, goddess figure. I don't think I'm going to do any behind the scorpion in the name, um, just because I really want those to pop against the purple, but I am going to go ahead and start doing the border. And so to do that, I'm going to take my wing divider. It's set at approximately half an inch. I'm going to widen it up just a little bit more. Yeah, at half an inch. And then I'm going to line it up with the edge of our leather. And then I'm just etching in a nice little line and this is what I'm going to use as a guide for myself I'm actually going to come through and cut along this and you don't want to exceed the end too far and I'm gonna go all the way around because this border here is going to remain untooled. You know, and I'm debating, I think I should maybe, nah, I'll go ahead and do it across like that. And I'm just going around the entire perimeter. Staying just as true as I can, nice and even. There we are. And now I'm actually going to reduce this down to the half inch size. And I do that just by bringing that in some. Okay, and so now I'm going to do a secondary line because this is the line I'm going to be punching my holes on so that I can do the lacing all the way around. And I'm not worrying so much about the corners because I actually need to go through with my corner rounder um, and get that rounded off. But I did want to share this step with you guys because this is one of those instances where having the right tool for the job makes so much of a difference by like way lots, which is a very technical term. <laughs> So just dragging that along. And don't sweat it too much if you mess up because this isn't the really important part. The really important part is this next step, which is, if I can find it, I've got just piles and piles of stuff growing on my work surface, is going through with a swivel knife. Um, not cutting on the quarter inch line, but on the half inch line. I'm going to come in. 
just place my blade like this and then pulling just nice straight even cut down like that turn this around place and pull just like that and um, this is something that you might want to practice uh, you'll get better with practice practice makes progress I always say that because I mean that's what I live by <laughs> um, but you'll get the hang of it and you'll notice I have my hand resting on the table and I'm just pulling very consistently just towards myself. Because that's where I find I have the most control over the blade. That might not be applicable to you, but you just do, you do you. And just dragging it through. Here we go. I'm going to place it and pull it through. Just like that. And I'm going to put my cap back on my swivel knife. Because these things are sharp. And I'm going to go through. I'm going to dampen this up just a little bit more actually. It's, I had cased this, and it's still a little damp, but just not as damp on the surface as I would like it to be. And I'm about to go through and do this texturing all through the background, so I want that nice and, and refreshed. Okay. So now I'm going to go through with this beveling tool, and then I'm going to go in and do the backgrounding with this tool. So i am gone through, I finished doing the beveling, and I'm going in and filling in the background. Now you might not be able to see very well right now, but an antique gel is really going to bring this out. Um, I'm just going through, and I've filled in some of the little nooks and crannies of our knotwork. Um, but I'm coming in and actually just filling in the entire background. And so the way that I like to do that is to kind of establish my border lines. And then it really only leaves me a couple of places that still need filled in. But I do the borders first. Um, because that's where I still want to be attentive. And make sure that I'm not exceeding into the realm of clean, nice, not to background. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I'm giving it just some good, solid flax. Um get it nice and just in there leather is absolutely fantastic for relieving stress there's nothing like bludgeoning something with a hammer hundreds of times to um, just just worry away your worries I guess <laughs> um, not the greatest thing for if you have neighbors below you like in an apartment or something but um, you know <laughs> so you can see I'm just coming down and doing the background whenever I come in on a little area like this <clears throat> I'm actually turning the tool a bit to the side that way only a little bit of it is touching and that way I don't have to worry about it again biting into any of my other knot work that I do not want as a background area mm -hmm. Whenever um, I'm working on this one, like I can't really see where that line is because my tool and my hand are in the way. So I'll actually place my tool on the leather and then drag it until I feel when it hits that lip. And that's just a way that I gauge. But you also don't necessarily want it smushed right up against your line work because it'll leave some little bumps. But you can sometimes just rub those right out. 
Um, but that's why I do the beveling, is it gives me a little bit of a buffer area that you can kind of pull off of your cut line by about a centimeter or two. Not a centimeter, millimeter or two. Um, and that's just how I go about filling in that background. So I'm going to keep doing this. Um, and then I do believe the next step is going to be to stain it. So that's exciting. <laughs> So I've actually started the die job. These are going to be the inside pieces of the folder um, binder cover. So you can kind of see we're getting this like purpley blue tone. I'm just using EcoFlow Professional Water Stain in purple. Um, getting a little bit out here. And on this one, I do want to go ahead and do the edge. Most of the edges are going to be finished with the lacing visited by a little moth. Go on, go on. Um, but the inside edge, so that papers will slide easily in and out of it, um, is just going to be finished. And I'm not sure which side's going to be which, so well, I've got some just loaded up here into my uh, sponge brush. And this is just a super cheap little sponge brush, but it does, it does the job fantastically. Um, so this is what we're going to be striving to achieve. I'm going to show you how I did this while this one dries. So I'm just going to set this over yonder. Um, perfectly regular piece of just a vegetable tanned leather. This has not been cased. So we are working from bone dry off the spool. Um, but I am going to take some water and I'm wetting it down very generously and before this really has a chance to soak in too much like I want water pooling on the surface I have my wet inkwell here and I'm just gonna dip my sponge and I'm gonna go ahead and very quickly start just in a circular motion incorporating this dye And you can see some of the pigments penetrate at different rates. And that's how we end up with some of the different blues and some of the different purples. I really personally enjoy the heck out of that. Like, that's one of my favorite things about working with this water stain is that the uh, waxy and inky pigments in it can kind of be so finicky. And it, it just it gives me so many different interesting results. Um and it's almost like watercoloring if that makes sense you know watercolor painting so I'm going to re-wet this because I like the way that that carries the pigments get some more pigment on our brush but see how it just kind of carries through the water and that's going to give us a much more interesting bloom I think than um I'm just trying to avoid brush strokes really and check out, I mean, that super vibrant purple that's coming out of this. Now, leather itself, the very nature of it is it's a finicky beast. Um, so you can see this end is coming out much more red than this end, even though I'm treating the sides the same way. So that can happen. Um, and that's something that I kept the client informed of. Um, I sent them a picture demonstrating the full spectrum of possibilities that can happen um, on this side of leather it's like and they were like go for it so I'm like okay <laughs> I just like to keep them informed because I've had the same purple come out you know almost you know dark blue looking it just it depends you know on the side of leather that you're doing it on and I just like kind of buffing it into the surface really trying to just phase out any of those um, any of those brush strokes just trying to get them out of the way mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and I feel like it never hurts to do a little bit more of a, I, I mean, I want the color super duper saturated into the, uh, into the leather. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Make sure I've got my sides nice and stained. <laughs> And I'm going to set that off to the side. And now comes this part. And I'm going to kind of build this up watercolor style. So I've squirted just some water into the uh, container, the inkwell. And I'm going to start just gently swirling and layering almost section by section. Letting that purple settle down into some of those nooks and crannies and crevices, though. Just trying to get a little bit of a hang of how this is going to want to incorporate into the leather. You can see here, we actually have some hot pinks showing up um, in the inkwell. I think that's super neat. I just, I love how much of an adventure um, staining leather can be. Okay, so I'm going to put just a little spot and then two squirts. Squirt, squirt. Is that something? Don't ever hesitate to dilute, dilute your um, dye and to see what happens, because you can go, always go through and add more pigment. You know, kind of see if if it's just not quite vibrant enough for you. But um, this is not a bad way to experiment and learn about your color intensities. Kind of carefully using the edge of my sponge to deliver the dye where I want it to be. And I'm not sweating it. I over overdid it a little bit there. Not too worried about it. We'll kind of see how this plays out. I'm trying to not leave any puddles or any lines or any like foamy bits. Okay, so now that I have that base layer down, I'm actually going to go and do a slightly, just a quick wash over 
to darken down all the edges. Sorry, I realize I'm off camera right now, but um, let me see if I can't get you all a more zoomed out perspective of what's happening here. Okay, so still not ideal, but... So this I know is way too mild and pale of a purple. Like I think we're going much more for a purple. <laughs> the second squirt. Okay, so now I'm actually going to start just filling in, and I have to kind of hurry because I don't want the brush strokes to settle. Now you can kind of hear even where the wood burning <laughs> or where the burning into the leather um, is catching on the brush a bit. That's completely normal. So we're building up some nice, like, kind of faded out purples here, but I really want to see how it looks with just the straight pigment. Again, trying to eliminate brush strokes as much as I can. Get it to penetrate as nice and evenly as I can.
sorry. Yeah, the one thing about the leather, I guess, especially whenever it's wet, is it actually then it clicks my uh, touch screen on my keyboard. <laughs> so I really hope that wasn't a copywritten song. But I've been watching a bunch of uh, watercolor tutorials on YouTube because I'm addicted. And I feel like I'm running out of pigment. Like, I still have the moisture, but the pigment intensity isn't what I would like it to be. So, just reloading up my brush and kind of reapplying. And I think, let me see if I can't kind of dab that out just a little bit, and maybe, um, oh, the block dyeing isn't working as well as I hoped it would. It's kind of getting in everywhere. Because I don't want to have to come through and, um, you know, paint individually all of these, uh, Celtic knots, but I would like for them to be able to stand out, even if just a bit. I was hoping I could use the side of the sponge to uh, bring it out. That brings out some nice details with the, um, the, just the tan leather shining through. So we'll kind of play that by ear and see what we can't accomplish. And I'm really loving these colors, but I, I wonder what the client will think, really, because it's, it's their piece. I want to know, <laughs> you know, if they prefer the solid, vibrant purple, or if they prefer these gentler, more varied tones. I really love that. Like, just, I mean, by blocking over it, leaving the brown kind of underlayer. And it's still letting me buff and blend out all of these lines and things. It's nothing wrong with working in layers. Mm-hmm. 
Putting a bit more in the well. Okay, so I am going to contact, this kind of gives you an idea of how I'm applying the paint and how it's, kind of this is how it looks after it dries for a little while. I'm going to contact the client and see which she likes better. So <laughs> we're here and I finished painting I, and, and staining and everything and I'm super pleased with how it came out. I did a combination of the Professional Water Stain by EcoFlow in purple as well as just the water-based EcoFlow leather dye in deep violet. Oops, think good thing I had the cap on. Um, and that's what helped me to achieve these color contrasts. And it was kind of like with watercolors, I just, bless you puppy, um, just built up layers and layers of the pigment to get the contrast between the super light and the super dark. And then I went through with an acrylic paint in this uh, folk art brand color shift and um, I've probably said this already but there'll be links to all this stuff down in the video description below um, I got this stuff from Hobby Lobby but you can find it for a little bit more affordable on Amazon so um, but yeah that's how it came out and I just painted it on with um, I did all the staining and painting with these three tools size 12 and size 1 round brushes and then just a cheap little uh, sponge brush. So the next step is going to be to go through and punch the holes along the quarter inch line around the edges. Um, and I'm going to be doing that with a four prong punch. Um, I'll get some video of it for y'all. But I'm going to get started on that and then I'll meet y'all right back here. Hey everybody. So I've gotten quite a bit of work done on the binder cover. Um, and you can see here... I've started going around and punching holes. I'm using a four prong punch. You could also use a chisel, which I have two examples here of some little chisels, but I'm particularly fond of this one because I use a lot of half round lacing. Um, and I find that I really like the way it lays with the punches. Uh, as opposed to a chisel. The difference between a punch and a chisel is a punch um, actually removes leather whereas a chisel just cuts it. So here we are getting the camera in nice and tight. Please pardon my disastrous workstation. Um, and I went through with a wing divider which you can size up and down by messing with this knob. See how it's bringing the tips of the wing divider closer together and then I just took that and I scored the edge where I wanted um, my holes to go. I have a granite block with a cutting board and then I'm just going to place it lined up with our line. Sorry I didn't mean to hit the camera and just punching well you want to make sure it goes through all the way so I'm going to have to move the camera up out of the way. Yep. Give it some nice solid wax. And just double check and make sure you've got nice clean holes. And then what we're going to do for the inside layer. Um, so you want these, uh, these holes to line up with each other. And I gave myself a little bit of room here on the inside, um, so that way I didn't want it like perfectly snug, I wanted it just a little baggy. 
So this one's, I mean, maybe three millimeters longer than the other, but it's definitely enough that it gives it a little bit of a bow so you can fit a page in there. Um, and so I actually just punched the first holes at the same time. Um, and then I'm going to go through and punch this as well. I'll need to wing divide it and punch it. But then I will start doing the lacing, which I actually think I'm going to do a completely separate video of. So future Vaughn, who's hopefully doing editing, please put a link up on the screen somewhere, maybe. Um, also, there should be a link down in the video description below. So I will meet you guys back here when I get done with this. So we'll see you around. Hey everybody, um, we're here. This is how the binder is coming out, the binder cover. You can see with the lacing around the edges, not quite done with it yet. This step is super time consuming. Um, but I did want to just show you guys, <clears throat> sorry, the finished result. I love the modeling in the different purple tones. Like I am so proud of this piece, like by like a million. I, I couldn't have dreamed that it would have come out so nicely. And I'm very fortunate that the client has been very patient um, with me taking my time getting it made um, as well as um, she just loves it. And that's, that's the goal here is the happy client. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. If you make something similar to this and would like to share pictures of what you have made or pictures from any of the tutorials that I make here uh, at Back to Earth Creation Studios and stuff. Um, then share them to my Facebook or Instagram. Again, links down below. Now, the coolest thing that I'm super excited about, though, is at the time of recording, we're coming up... Loud noises! We're coming up on our next Berry House giveaway on Patreon. And so this little guy is going to be finding a new home. And I'll show him to you in just a sec. Let me get... Well, so let me get my ground on. There we go. <laughs> so if you would like a chance to win one of our homes for the gnomeless, because I just like caught on that, <clears throat> please go to my Patreon. There'll be links down below or a little thing popping up on either side of the screen that tells you how to become a patron. But if you pledge just a dollar or more before October 1st, that's when payments get taken out. And that's when the drawing will actually be like on October 3rd. But $1 gets your name in the hat once. $5 gets your name in the hat five times. And if you pledge $10 or more, your name is still in the running for the giveaways, but you also get a monthly craft crate mailed to you. And for the month of October only, um, I'll be sending off, like, again, if you pledge before October 1st, I'll be sending off double kits because September didn't go very well for me. And I didn't get shipments paid out, but this is like the first time in a year that that's happened, so I'm not going to be making a habit of it. But, yeah, and it's got a little candle, LED candle for in the base, and then the top my hat to you um, is actually an incense burner and I think that's pretty cool and it has a little functioning chimney the little chimney caps removable but um but yeah so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me I do hope you learned something from this video and that was it was helpful in some way to you so I'll see y'all around happy crafting bye <laughs>